Howdy, Immortalium here, and today I'm going to be doing my top 10 Osama Tezuka manga video. So, if you're familiar with me, you'll know I'm a big fan of Osama Tezuka. And I've been collecting as much of his manga in English uh, as I possibly can. And I think over the years I've built a decent Osama Tezuka collection. I have approximately 29 different series from Osama Tezuka in my collection. Uh, which I think is decent, it's certainly nowhere near comprehensive, but it's the best that I could possibly do at the moment. And having recently finished the last Osama Tezuka title uh, that I hadn't read in my collection, uh, I decided, you know what, I should probably make a top 10 Osama Tezuka manga video of all the titles that I've read. And that's something that I want to emphasize, by the way, that I have read. Obviously, Osama Tezuka did a lot of series, and one of his most famous series, for instance, is a series called Phoenix. And Phoenix was in fact released in English, but it's been out of print for many, many years. And I myself do not have it in my collection, I have not read it. I would love to, but I have not. Uh, and so f many people would go into a top 10 Osama Tezuka manga video expecting that Phoenix would be near the top. And the fact is, because I have not read it, it's not going to be in this list. Um, for those of you interested in what series could possibly be in this list, I'm going to share a bit of footage of my Osama Tezuka collection so that you can see uh, what titles are in it and what titles could possibly end up uh, in this top 10. But that's just something that I wanted to emphasize. Uh, I can only talk about the manga that I have read personally. And I'm gonna be going from uh, 10 to one, uh, so in an ascending order. So starting off at number 10, what is my 10th favorite Osama Tezuka manga that I've read? And that is a series called Melody of Arn and Other Short Stories. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the premise of this manga, uh, the main story uh, follows a character called Dan Takia, whose sister is marrying a guy called Eddie Albany. Eddie Albany's family uh, is a bit of a mafia, and as part of Dan Takia joining the family through his sister, um, he has to swear an oath uh, stating that he's not going to rat them out, uh, that he is going to be loyal to them, etc. etc. Uh, however, he witnesses a crime and decides, like a decent person, to report it. However, it turns out that the hitman uh, was a friend of the Albany family, and so the Albany family considered this to be a slight against them. And so they take Dan Takia, uh, they strap him to a railway track, and they use a cart uh, to tear off both of his arms. As you might imagine, Dan Takia is angry about this. And once he is recovered, um, understandably he faints after the experience, but once he's recovered, he swears vengeance upon the Albany family and he goes searching for new arms to replace uh, the arms that he lost. Uh, in addition to that, there's two other short stories in this collection, but that's the main story. And I myself am a huge fan of revenge. Um, I love revenge stories. And as you might imagine, I was really, really gung-ho for this when I began reading. I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Um, admittedly, the story didn't quite pan out the way that I wanted it to. Um, but overall, it was still a very strong story that had a lot of great themes, great characters, great moments, and great artwork, I should say. And the two other stories, I was more favorable about the second story in this collection than the third. Um, but they're still very good companions to the main story of Melody of Arn. And so overall, I consider Melody of Arn to be currently the 10th best Osama Tezuka manga that I have read. Following that, at number 9, we have the series Ode to Kirihito. So the story of Ode to Kirihito is that there is a village uh, which is being affected by a new disease called Monmao disease. And Monmao disease warps the bodies of people. Um, it makes them appear more dog-like, it shifts their bones, so they have a more dog-like appearance, they grow hair, um, etc, etc. And two doctors are examining this case, Kirihisho and Dr. Tatsugawa. And Kirihisho is very genuine about wanting to help these people, whereas Ta Dr. Tatsugawa um, is more interested in becoming famous uh, because of this disease. And that's basically how the story begins. And it's an incredible read. Um, I have to say, um, the thing that drops it down to ninth place, um, because otherwise, other than this fact, um, it would definitely be higher. Um, but there is a sexual assault scene early in this manga, um, which I thought was very poorly handled, and actually soured me towards this manga, 
um, for a little bit while I was reading it. Eventually the quality of the storytelling um, and the quality of the artwork and the characters um, did eventually draw me back into this manga so that I ended up enjoying it quite a bit. Um, but as I said before, I thought that sexual assault scene early on in the manga was very poorly handled and so it did sour me uh, quite a bit uh, towards this manga as a whole. Um, but I still think that overall it's an incredible read and I think it's still amongst Osama Tezuka's best works that I've read from him. Coming in at 8th place, uh, the earliest manga that's going to be in this top 10 list, uh, that'll be Osama Tezuka's The Twin Knights. Now, I can't give too much details about the story of The Twin Knights uh, simply because it's a sequel uh, to Princess Knight, another very famous Osama Tezuka title. But I do want to emphasize that I actually prefer this manga to Princess Knight. That's for a variety of reasons. First of all, I think as an adventure story, uh, this is a story that's incredibly well written. There's a great sense of wonder throughout this story. Um, there's a great sense of threat uh, towards the main characters' lives. And they really have to struggle um, in order to be able to maintain their positions in society, um, as well as to overcome uh, this threat that's against them. Um, but the other thing that I really want to emphasize is the artwork here. I think the artwork here is amongst Osama Tezuka's best um, when it comes to his early manga. It looks so beautiful, like a Disney movie. And because of that, that's why uh, The Twin Knights uh, is at 8th place on my top 10 Osama Tezuka list. Following that, at 7th place, uh, is a manga called Mu. Now, Mu is a tough read. First of all, I better emphasize that, um, because it's about two characters, one of which is a Catholic priest called Father Gorai, and the other is a character called Michio Yuki. Now, when Michio Yuki was a child, Father Gorai um, sexually assaulted him. And at around the same time, Michio Yuki was hit with a bioweapon uh, that caused him uh, to lose all sense of empathy, uh, to become a psychopath. A big part of this manga is Father Gurai uh, trying to find redemption for what he did. And meanwhile, it's also trying to figure out about this bioweapon that's been developed by the US military called Mu, uh, which is the thing that hit uh, Michio Yuki uh, and caused him to lose all empathy. And I have to say that the artwork here is absolutely incredible. When it comes to Osama Tezuka artwork, quite often when I'm trying to introduce Osama Tezuka to people, uh, one of the panels I show is this incredible drawing of a dog uh, that he did within this manga. Um, but beyond that, uh, the story itself is great. Um, there's a lot of intrigue, uh, there's a lot of excitement as you read the manga, and it asks some very tough questions of the reader. For instance, can this man who sexually assaulted a child, uh, can he ever find redemption? Is it even possible for him to be redeemed, uh, no matter how much effort he puts into it? And so while a tough read, I think nonetheless it's a fascinating read and definitely one of Osama Tezuka's best stories. Following that, uh, we've got a title called Apollo's Song. Now, Apollo's Song it's a, very, it's a very interesting manga, to say the least. It follows a character called Shogo, and his mother constantly abuses him uh, because of the lack of love that she's had in her life. And because of that, he ends up growing a hatred uh, towards the concept of love himself, and that results in him hurting animals that he sees uh, performing loving acts. He's taken to a mental institution, and at one point, uh, he's visited by the goddess Aphrodite, and Aphrodite decides that she's going to make him understand the concept of love. And so she takes his soul and has him experience love throughout the ages. And interestingly, uh, this manga is referred to as a bit of a sex education book. Now, I don't quite 100% agree with that, uh, but it is definitely very interesting to tackle uh, the concept of love and sex. And a lot of the stories um, that we see Shogo go through are fantastic. I think it's an incredible work um, just exploring the concept of love. What does it mean to love? How is sex 
part of that love. And overall, I think it's definitely one of Osama Tezuka's most interesting uh, works. Fun little fact, by the way, is that um, considering that I'm talking about all this uh, love and sex and everything. It's interesting to note that this is actually a shonen series. <laughs> Very interesting there. Following that, um, at fifth place, we have uh, Ludwig B. Now, Ludwig B is the latest um, Osama Tezuka title on this list. In fact, it's so late that that actually plays into my own opinions on it. Uh, so Ludwig B, unsurprisingly, uh, is a bit of a biography of Ludwig von Beethoven, you know, the composer uh, who is also known for being deaf. Um, Osama Tezuka was a big fan of Beethoven's music, and so he was very interested in doing a bi biography of his life. And to be fair, uh, when I was about to start reading this manga, I was thinking to myself, how interesting is a biography of Ludwig von Beethoven going to be? But I have to say that the storytelling here is absolutely incredible. And the artwork, oh my god, the artwork is absolutely stunning in this book. And in most cases, it would actually be much higher on this list. Um, there's a certain aspect um, that plays into this here, why it's this low on the list. As I said, this is Osama Tezuka's latest title that's on this list. And it's so late, in fact, uh, that Osama Tezuka died while writing this manga. And so this manga actually ends on a cliffhanger that is never going to be resolved. And understandably, I can't blame Osama Tezuka. After all, he died. But on the other hand, it can be a little bit unsatisfying to read through these two books, um, to be so invested in this story, and then to have it end on an unsatisfactory note. Um, I did have to take that into account. But nonetheless, I do think that Ludwig B is still one of Osama Tezuka's best series. It would be much better if it had some form of conclusion. But nonetheless, I still think that not only Osama Tezuka fans, but manga fans still owe it uh, to seek out this manga and to read it, because I still think, even with the unsatisfying conclusion, that's still an absolutely incredible read. Following that, um, this one's gonna have a bit of an asterisk. This is arguably one of Osama Tezuka's most popular series, and that is uh, Blackjack. Now, I have to explain here, that of all the series on this top 10 list, uh, this series is the only one that I have not read all of it. There are 17 volumes of it in English, and unfortunately I was only able to get the first five volumes. Uh, so admittedly I haven't experienced the whole thing, um, but based on these five volumes, I still think it's very worthy of being placed here. So for those of you unfamiliar with the story of Blackjack, um, we follow a character called Blackjack, who is an unlicensed surgeon. And he has an assistant called Panoko. And basically, it's episodic stories of uh, Blackjack kind of coming to understand why these patients came to him, of all people, how he is going to cure them, of what is usually a very difficult uh, illness, injury, etc., etc. And I think it's an absolutely a marvelous read. And I think that if anyone uh, considers themselves to be a fan of not only Osama Tezuka, but of the medium of manga itself. Uh, they owe it to themselves uh, to go seek out Blackjack. Following that, we have Osama Tezuka's Buddha, which is a biography of the life of Siddhartha Gautama, uh, as in the founder of Buddhism. I have to say here um, that it is an absolutely incredible work. Um, and even for those who aren't interested in the religion of Buddhism itself, um, it's still an absolutely incredible story of seeing how uh, this prince, uh, who seemed to have everything, uh, realized the injustices uh, that was facing this world and decided to try to figure out um, a way to live um, in order to counteract that. Um, as you can see, it's quite a long series. It's eight volumes here, um, but these volumes are actually uh, quite thick. I believe it might have been 15 volumes in the original Japanese. Uh, so it is quite a big series. Um, but nonetheless, I think the story here, the themes, the artwork, I think all of it represents what makes Osama Tezuka worth reading. So I do think that Buddha very much deserves uh, the rank uh, that I'm going to place it at, which is number three of all the Osama Tezuka manga uh, that I have read. I think it's just that good. Following that, at number two, Message to Adolf. Um, Message to Adolf is uh, set from 1936, 
basically to the end of World War II, there is some scenes after the story, kind of the main story, uh, that goes further than that, that goes into the 50s and 60s, 70s, um, and eventually the 80s. But the vast majority of the story is set from 1936 to 1945. And it follows basically the story of three Adolfs and another character. Uh, so you have Adolf Kaufman, uh, who is a half Japanese, half German boy uh, living in Japan. Uh, Adolf Camille, uh, who is a Jewish boy living in Japan and friends with Adolf Kaufman. Uh, and of course, Adolf Hitler is in the leader of Nazi Germany. And while we're following their stories, uh, we're also following a Japanese reporter called Sohei Toge, who learns of these documents that will change the shape of the world, of history. Decides that he's going to seek out these documents and put his life on the line. The story here is absolutely incredible. And in fact, I would actually say that the character of Adolf Kaufman um, the character development that he goes through, the changes. Um, I would actually consider him to be one of the greatest manga characters to have ever been written. I think his story is just that good. The story surrounding all of the other characters as well is absolutely incredible. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. You want to know how the story is going to progress, how these characters are going to be changed by the events that surround them. And I just think uh, that is an absolutely amazing work. Uh, admittedly, I do think that the second last chapter of this series could have been fleshed out just a little bit more. I would have liked that. Uh, but nonetheless, I think that Message to Adolf is not only one of Osama Tezuka's best manga, but one of the best manga to have ever been written. And finally, uh, for my number one Osama Tezuka manga of all time, and for those of you familiar with me, you probably know what's coming up here. And that, of course, is what I consider to be Osama Tezuka's greatest manga, Ayako. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Ayako, uh, Ayako is set after World War II. It follows a character called Jiro Tenge, who is a prisoner of war and secures his release by becoming a spy, essentially, uh, for the US in occupied Japan. He returns home to the Tenge estate, his home, uh, and finds out that corruption is rife in the family. And nothing represents this better than a little girl called Ayako, uh, who he does not know. She was not around uh, the last time he was at home. And the background to her, why she exists, who she is, represents one of the most corrupt aspects of his family, amongst many others. The exploration of this family, uh, why they're so corrupt, what has caused this corruption, um, how best to deal with this corruption, uh, as well, of course, as occupied Japan, um, is an absolutely fascinating read. And I have to say here that the artwork here is absolutely incredible, um, as well as some amazing panel work. And as far as I'm concerned, I think Ayako is one of the greatest manga of all time. And it's one of the few manga uh, that I would actually unhesitatingly give a 10 out of 10. I think it is a masterpiece. And I think, just as with Message to Adolf, I think if you are a manga fan, if you are a fan of graphic novels, if you are a fan of storytelling, I think you owe it to yourself to go seek out Ayako. Uh, the only thing that I will warn about Ayako is that um, there is a lot of mature themes in this manga. Um, covering a wide range of topics such as death, such as sexual content and incest, amongst many other aspects. So it's definitely a senin work. Um, but for those who can handle those types of topics, I think you owe it to yourself uh, to seek this manga out. So that was my top 10 Osama Tezuka manga. As usual, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on my choices here. Uh, obviously, it isn't definitive. Um, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I believe I made that point quite clear at the beginning of this video. But as far as I'm concerned, this is my top 10 Osama Tezuka manga that I have read. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these series that you have read, whether you agree with me uh, that these are Osama Tezuka's top 10 manga, what your own top 10 Osama Tezuka manga would be, and of course, any other thoughts and opinions you have on Osama Tezuka or these manga in particular. I would love to hear them in the comments below. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.